of questioning. I would the question today um, posited by Senator Men is what is the real uh, debt limit for America? And the answer seems to be it is dangerously near and not in our control. As Dr. Meltzer has said, uh, market perceptions and actions change quickly, and countries uh, uh, that act prudently ahead of the crisis are in a better position. And my question doc, to Mr. Edwards, Dr. Meltzer, is uh, do you think there are some lawmakers in Washington in denial about the seriousness of our debt um, uh, crisis because temporarily the costs of borrowing for this country are low, are being masked uh, by outside, well, both inside and outside the Fed's quantitative easing, lowering of the interest rates, uh, European crisis, which created a... Uh, a flight to safety, so our borrowing costs are temporarily low. Do you, temporarily lower. Uh, do you think that 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 once the true costs of America borrowing is revealed, uh, that there could be a more serious action by some in Washington to get this debt uh, uh, crisis under control? Dr. Meltzer, Mr. Edwards. I I believe that the <clears throat> steps that have been taken are preliminary steps that that is to get $1.5 or $1.2 trillion in reductions is just the beginning. What we need to do is to give people confidence that their future is going to be bright. We don't do that by throwing a few dollars at them. We do that by giving them concern, care that we are on a stable path, that we are going to go back to the future the way we knew the past. And that means that when, unlike Mr. Ball, <clears throat> what models like the IMF model leave out are the fact that if you move resources from low productivity good, you know, it may be very desirable for people to receive transfers from the government. I don't dispute that. But those do not have, those have very low productivity use. If we transfer resources to higher productivity use, we raise the future and their optimism. If we cut the deficit, we convince people that their tax rates are not going to be higher in the future. The IMF model doesn't allow for that. It doesn't take into account the productivity change, and it doesn't take into account the beneficial effects of higher, of expected high, of lower tax rate. Those are important conditions. Let me close my comment by saying two things. If we look at the history of the post-war period, we find that there were three fiscal changes that really did enormous good. One was the Kennedy-Johnson tax cuts. Arthur Oaken, who was the chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, said the most effective part of those tax cuts were the business tax cuts. They got the biggest bang for the buck. The second big fiscal change that worked well were the Reagan tax cuts of 19, the early 1980s and again in 1986. And the third policy that gave people confidence were the Clinton tax increases, which assured people that their future tax rates were not going to go up, that they had seen what they were going to have to pay and there wouldn't be any more. That's important. Give people confidence. That's what the public desperately needs at the moment. Confidence that their policy, that the policies that the government puts out are going to be sustainable and productive. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Edwards. Yeah, I think your, your question uh, goes to the, the, the right point that uh, because the United States is special, because we can, we're a, a haven for uh, international uh, capital in a dangerous world, we, American policymakers have been able to get away with running giant deficits for far too long. I think if we were a smaller country like Australia, uh, the crisis from our debt would have already uh, happened. I noticed... Um, uh, in a, in a, a story yesterday on uh, Bloomberg, uh, Italy's just been downgraded. And one of the, the things that I think it was S&P noted is that they've been downgraded partly because they have a dysfunctional political system. And uh, that seems to be sort of what's going on uh, in the United States. Uh, Canada, again, to go back to the 90s, uh, hit the wall at 80%, where they're dead at 80% of GDP. Ours is up to 100% of GDP. So uh, we have been skating along uh, for, for so long, I think partly because 
uh, we, we're in this special situation, and Japan shows, you know, that you can run along sort of as a zombie economy for a decade or two with debt at 200 percent of GDP. Um, so, you know, the, the, the real damage, though, I think, you know, is ultimately the spending. We've got to get the spending under control, and, uh, and, that, uh, and that has been the key to the su success in places like Canada and Sweden uh, that have cut, cut their uh, deficits. Thank you. point, I think, from both being the key is to restore consumer and business confidence by getting our financial house in order with a credible way to shrink the size of government to restore um, that balance. Uh, Mr. Cummings. Now, just adding.